landing on the south pole of the moon at about 6.4 p.m. this upcoming Wednesday, Russia's moon landing attempt, Luna 25, crashed on the lunar surface. Now, like Chandrayaan-3, Luna 25-2 was headed to the south pole of the moon. Russia's first moon mission in almost 50 years, Luna 25 spun into an uncontrolled orbit during a pre-landing maneuver. The country, remember, was in race with India to become the first country to land a rover on the moon's unexplored south pole. Now, with Luna 25's exit, the spotlight, of course, now is on India's Chandrayaan-3, which completed its second and final deboosting maneuver last night, reducing the orbit of lander Vikram. However, there are lessons to be learned from Luna 25's failure to land on the moon's south pole. The foremost challenge being controlling the speed of the lander during descent at the 100-kilometer altitude. The lack of an atmosphere at this altitude means conventional methods like parachutes cannot slow the lander down. So deceleration may be a challenge and any miscalculation can lead to unsuccessful landing as seen with Luna 25. Then there's the other challenge of unexpected terrain changes like craters and rocks that can cause errors in the sensors guiding the lander. So the landing software needs to unforeseeable obstacles and extensive pre-landing simulations. That was the second challenge. The last and the third challenge, moon quakes or unpredictable seismic activity on the moon can disrupt the lander's balance. So maintaining control will be extremely critical at the landing phase. Now, the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, maintains that Chandrayaan-3 has a failure-based design and that all the challenges have been taken into account. So, with a billion hopes riding on Chandrayaan-3, the excitement is quite literally sky-high and a nation holds its breath. Let me now uh, take this across to my guests and understand, uh, you know, what challenges lie for Chandrayaan-3 and, of course, what happened with Luna 25. I'm joined by Mr. Girish uh, Lingana, aerospace and defense analyst, and Dr. Ajay Lele, consultant at the Manohar Parikar Institute for Defense Studies and Analysis, also joins us this evening. Uh, welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much for talking with Mirror now. Girish uh, Lingana, for, for, to you first, um, you know, Extremely unfortunate that uh, Russia's Luna 25 failed. Of course, this was something that Russia was trying uh, uh, in for, the, for the first time in 47 years. Uh, but after yesterday's technical glitch and today's, quote-unquote, being in the uncontrollable or uncontrolled orbit, help us understand, was this kind of a failure expected? And what does it really mean when you say uh, that it was in an uncontrollable orbit? See, uh, this exactly has happened what happened in 2009 Chandrayaan-3. See, the communication what we sent from the ground control, probably the whole link would not have gone. Only the last part would have reached so there will be a miscommunication when you send something from the ground. It can happen to anybody, for us or uh, uh, for Russians or anybody, it can happen. So the similar problem has happened. There is a technical glitch. When they send the command, the full command, the chain of command has not reached the uh, Luna 25. And uh, due to this miscommunication, it has lost the trajectory and gone into a crash. So, uh, so, so, Girish Lignana, was this expected after yesterday's glitch? Uh, it was uh, expected because Russia, Roscommerce was not so transparent as how the Chandrayaan-3 commentary, what we, ISRO is giving to us. So, only one line we got is we are trying to rectify this, but we didn't know that, of course, there was 50-50 chances whether it may get rectified or whether it is it will get it will go into a crash it was an expected uh, this one it's it's a 50 50 yesterday when they gave the statement okay okay dr lele coming 
Coming to you, uh, you know, we've told our viewers about the challenges that Chandrayaan-3 might face now in its course before 23rd of August and even during the landing, whether it's controlling the speed of the lander or, uh, you know, craters and rocks being uh, there right when the lander is, uh, you know, Chandrayaan-3 is uh, about to land on that south pole, on that critical south pole. Uh, how do you think this really is differentiated from Luna 25? How are we different in terms of our technicalities and how we've designed, as Istro says, failure-based design? And it, it does take into consideration the challenges and difficulties that Chandrayaan-3 might face. I think let's accept one fact that the failures can happen to anybody. In fact, we also had a failure in the year 2019. Sure. At the end of the day, this is a rocket science, as it was uh, pointed out earlier, that uh, there could have been a communication gap. The entire communication could have not reached uh, to the module of the, the Luna 25. Uh, so that could happen to anyone. And uh, here, one only can take certain amount of uh, uh, preventive precautions based on your early experiences. As it has been pointed out, as far as Chandrayaan 3 is concerned, it was identified that the during last five meters or so, there was a certain amount of a problem, and the problem was associated with the software. Now, as far as software is concerned, software is uh, garbage in, garbage out sort of a thing. So whatever you teach to the software, the software will behave. Uh, as far as Chandrayaan 2 was concerned, the software had limited options which were inserted into it. Hence, ISRO's chairman a couple of days back had pointed out that based on various simulations which they have planned, conducted on the, uh, in ISRO's premises, that what possibly may go wrong, and if something goes wrong, what is the plan B, plan, plan A, plan B, or plan C, to rectify that. So the software, the particularly the algorithm, has been strengthened. So all sorts of possibilities have been taken care of, and for every possibility of going something amiss, there is an alternative made available as far as the software is concerned. As far as hardware is concerned, understanding that you require slightly a sturdier vehicle, the legs of the uh, Chandrayaan module, particularly the lander, have been strengthened. If you see the weight also, around 250 kgs more weight is there. So even if there are certain amount of uh, large moment problems because of certain radiations, because last time there was a feeling that there could be certain problems associated with certain amount of, uh, because uh, there is a lunar gravity also. There could have been certain problems associated with lunar gravity also. So all those things have been taken care of both in the hardware and software part by designing the Chandrayaan-3 lunar uh, landing system. Dr. Lele, um, you know, I also want to understand from you and for the benefit of our viewers, uh, are you saying that the fact, the advantage that Luna 25 had over Chandrayaan 3 or so, it seemed that time that it was lighter in weight and that it had better efficient fuel storage, that did not work for it in space? I don't think so, because weight should not be an issue. If your entire software and hardware is done correctly, uh, if you are reaching to orbit in a correct fashion, then weight should not be an issue. Just to trace the history of all these rover systems also, uh, a couple of years back, in fact, uh, Russia or the Soviets were the first in the world in the year 1970 to put their rover onto the moon surface. So they have been used to doing all those things. Maybe something has gone wrong with the communication, because you can carry a weight based on what is the strength of your rocket. Uh, so based on that, all the calculations have been done. And Americans have landed even the, what we call as a moon buggy uh, during Apollo 15, 16, and 17 missions, where actually the astronaut had sat in the buggy and moved around onto the surface of the moon. So I don't think so that weight is an issue. You all technicality should work, work correctly. Hmm. Okay. Girish Ringana, you know, this uh, mission, this moon mission by Russia also came amid the fact that uh, it there were sanctions imposed by it uh, after the Russia-Ukraine war and therefore it did not have a lot of access to Western technology and a lot of uh, parts in it, uh, a lot of, you know, technical parts that it could not obtain 
campaign during the making, uh, the production and the launch of uh, Luna 25. Do you think that also sort of contributed to the fact uh, that the mission failed, that there was some sort of technical glitch uh, or some, you know, whatever issue we saw with that, do you think that contributed to it? Uh, you're asking me? G. Uh, Gigi, see, Gigi. yes, that also is a partly contribu uh, partly contributed to this failure because whenever you launch a satellite, you require the uh, network of all the satellite agencies. In fact, even in, even in Chandrayaan three, as soon as the rocket was launched, see, we were getting information from NASA when it was near. We were getting information from ESA. So various uh, come, uh, network will be uh, working when a satellite is being launched. So here Russia didn't have that privilege of having the coordinated efforts by the various agencies because they only had a China with them. But uh, the coming to the parts, uh, this project they started somewhere in 2010 and it's not that they started because India is launching Chandrayaan 3. No, it started in 2010. In fact, they wanted to do in 2021. After that, due to certain issues, it came down to 2023. That is one issue. Next issue is Roscommerce as an organization is not uh, well uh, organized, I can say. It is not well structured they don't have much of finances or the there is many people are not there. The structure is missing in Roscommerce because of this war. All the finances have been morely uh, diverted towards the war and the ammunitions rather than this uh, satellite, in, rather than this space infrastructure. So this also might have caused some problem. But anyhow, they have reached up to this level and they have even taken the photograph of the moon also. So we cannot say they were completely yeah. a failure project. Yes, this glitch can happen to anybody. It happened to even to India and it has happened even to Russia also. Okay, but now in Chandrayaan 3, we have yeah, taken a yes. lot of measures. We have taken a lot of measures for this uh, software mis uh, not to happen. Because we, as you told, we have uh, built this entire structure based on the failure mode design itself. We have built our this uh, Chandrayaan 3. And also every uh, critical part we have kept, uh, uh, what you can say in a car, a stepney is being kept, if at all a tire goes like that, every critical part we have kept a redundancy so that anything happens immediately we can do that. Even as per uh, the chairman in some uh, previous uh, 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 meeting, he has told even if the thrusters fail, even everything fail, the salvage mode will ensure that Chandrayaan 3 will land safely on the uh, uh, prescribed area. Hmm. Okay, of course, lessons learned. I think uh, as scientists, as, as members of the scientific community, uh, you would understand better that failures and success are just part of the whole process. And I'm glad, uh, Girish Lignanaji, that you clarified uh, the fact that Russia started this mission long back, as opposed to what, uh, you know, how the conversations on social media have been going on, that they put out a race with India and all of that. Uh, but clearly, every country has its own agenda and has its own process in their uh, moon missions and their space exploration. But uh, quickly, before wrapping up this conversation, just a last word from both of you on uh, what you expect now with Chandrayaan 3. What can we, as uh, you know, people who don't understand the technicalities of space much but are hugely, hugely excited for that uh, super special South Pole uh, moon landing of Chandrayaan 3, what do you expect first? Dr. Lele, to you, 30 seconds, and then Girish Ji. I think we need to uh, talk a little bit on Chandrayaan 1 mission 2008-2009, uh, where we had a good amount of scientific exploration uh, of identifying water on the moon's surface. And that is the basic reason why we have chosen South Pole. Uh, so our mission has got a science base. Definitely, it will be a technology demonstration, or a demonstration also of undertaking a soft landing. But the entire mission should be looked at it holistically. And I think it has got both technology as well as a science base. Because if you see the rover and the lander, the 
sensors on board of it or what we call payloads on board of it, they are going to undertake a lot amount of uh, observations right from seismology to thermal structures, uh, various observations will be undertaken and that will eventually help us to build for the future missions also. Okay, Girish Linganaji, your last word on Chandrayaan 3. Uh, I am sure that Chandrayaan 3 will be a success and we come out with the victory. That is very sure because of the designs and the care what the, the whole team has taken. So I have no doubt on it that we will land it. Second thing is, I also feel bad that Luna 25 should not have failed because this was marked for working for more than a year. So we, we lost that much of data uh, what we were able to get through this Luna 25. Yeah. So this is really a setback for a science. As a science fraternity, I say that it is yeah. really a setback of a failure of Luna 25 for us. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, well, uh, lessons will be learned uh, by Roscomos and of course Chandrayaan 3, a billion hopes uh, lie there on the 23rd of August. We'll have to see how that pans out. But on that note, uh, Girish Linganaji and Dr. Ajay thank you very much for joining us on Mirror thank Now you. and sharing your perspective on the space exploration by Russia and India. Of course, our fingers remain crossed as Chandrayaan 3 nears the moon landing and India's moon mission nears its final destination. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Uh, moving on, uh, let's go across and get you updates.